Hi, th I'm, I'm Guy, this is Jeremiah. We're with iEnergy Supply, um, this, and we make... The, the two-stage Tesla turbine. It's got an extra rotor on each side of the turbine to assist the particles, to give them centrifugal force, to reduce the back pressure inside the first stage. We've got two stages here. The first stage is, this, is the center turbine. This is just a regular Tesla turbine in the center here. And we put an extra rotor on the top and the bottom, and that's the stage, that's stage two to, to the rotor. This, this stage two assists by adding centrifugal force to the exiting particles. So you actually get a lower pressure inside of the turbine when you rotate the shaft. And that draws in ambient air because the lower pressure, so the lower pressure can actually, uh, the ambient air can actually assist the rotation of the turbine. And because this stage two is attached directly to the shaft, the, the power is transferred into stage two to power the centrifugal force to remove the back pressure from the turbine. Tesla says that this, this, could cause your, this will cause your turbine to move from 50 to 100 percent. It's in a British patent um, on the production of high vacua, apparatus for the pr production of high vacua. Um, he says he doesn't specifically tell you how to hook it up, but he says it will increase the efficiency from 50 to 100 percent. Okay, so this is a two-stage Tesla turbine. Everybody usually just builds a single-stage Tesla turbine. Nikola Tesla states in his production of high vacua patent, um, it's a British patent, that you, that you can reduce the back pressure in his turbine and increase the efficiency from 50 to 100 percent. Scientists say that that's impossible because of the friction losses due in, in the process. Um, but uh, Nikola Tesla was giving us a hint there, we believe, um, that this thing can run on ambient air. So one of the differences that you'll notice in here is, is with a regular Tesla turbine, when you rotate the shaft and you disconnect the air, the air supply, you're going to have air blowing out the intake. And that's a bad, that's a bad thing. You want, you want it to draw in naturally without, without putting any pressure, initial pressure inside of the, inside of the turbine. So, there's, there's, this is a two-stage Tesla turbine right here. The center part right here is, the center part is a regular Tesla turbine. So on the same shaft, we added stage two, which is the top and the bottom discs here. So now when you rotate it, it creates a, a lower pressure inside the turbine and actually draws in ambient air to help assist the rotation of the, the turbine because there's a lower pressure in there and ambient air wants to fill in that lower pressure. The way it creates that lower pressure is the, the exhaust, um, or the, the stage two, which is the top and the bottom rotor right here, uh, all connected to the same shaft, um, uses centrifugal force to throw the particles outward and, it, and that's what creates the low pressure because when you remove the air inside the turbine with the centrifugal force, of this of stage two you create that lower pressure inside tesla said you can increase the efficiency of the turbine by reducing the back pressure in the exhaust of the turbine from 14 pounds all the way down to one pound so so that you've got uh no particles in the way so in order to increase the velocity of the particles that are incoming into the turbine in reducing the back pressure allows those particles to flow smoothly without hitting the slower particles. If you got a bunch of slow particles in there because it's full of air, um, the, the velocity of the incoming particles is reduced significantly. When you put, when you, when you put a, a stream of air inside of a vacuum and there's no other particles in the way, the, the, uh, the velocity of the particles can be increased exponentially and that's what happens inside the, the turbine. You want the, you want the particles to be, to be moving as fast as possible all in the same direction and that's, that's one of the reasons that Tesla uses his discs because if you've, if you've got a fin and those particles hit that fin they're, 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 gonna, they're gonna be forced in random directions and that's gonna cause a bunch of turbulence. So he uses the principle of viscosity, uh, the dragging effect instead of the impact effect that a normal turbine will have. So it's a laminar flow that you want to achieve inside the turbine and in order to create that perfect laminar flow you need the back pressure to be reduced from 14 pounds all the way down to about one pound which 
in, which increases the efficiency from 50 to 100 percent. We've also got magnetic bearings on this particular turbine. That, that helps you, you balance the uh, rotor. In order to increase the efficiency, you need to reduce the pressure inside of the turbine from 14 pounds all the way down to one pound per square inch. Atmosphere is pushing down on us with 14 pounds right now. So usually the 14 pounds will push in, in the exhaust and it'll push in the intake. And what happens is, what happens is when you remove the, the back pressure of the, in the exhaust, when you remove that atmospheric pressure, it creates a low pressure inside of the turbine. And that low pressure allow, uh, is, is a vacuum and it allows the particles to move um, exponentially faster because there's nothing in the way. The only thing that's in the way, which isn't in the way, is, is the high speed particles moving around all in the same direction. Um, so there's nothing slow happening inside the first stage of the turbine. The only way for the particles to get out of the turbine is to lose their kinetic energy to the shaft. Another thing about another another thing is it causes a cooling effect. So instead of having like a radiator on your car, you you uh, you don't you don't need a radiator because it's taking all that heat energy out of whatever you're using to rotate it. Um, so like usually you need a radiator. Like your, your car needs a radiator to get rid of that excess heat energy because it will start melting things. This will automatically cool itself. We actually have a video on YouTube. It's called uh, it's called. Uh, Tesla turbine variant turning water vapor into ice. It was going. It was going into the turbine at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was freezing that water vapor and forming up ice inside of the first stage of the turbine. We had never. We had never been able to get that to happen. That freezing effect to happen without having stage two and removing that back pressure to rem to to get all the kinetic energy out of the part incoming particles. So we want to. We, we're going to run it with. A, we're going to run a pulse jet engine using Tesla turbine to to get it to get it spinning, uh, to get it rotating, and to have a, a, a massive amount of energy and remove 100% of that energy out of it instead of say uh, 15 or or 20% like the cars that we use today. Um, and then we'll have ambient air assist because there's a lower pressure inside, and that ambient air also has heat energy that it can lose to the shaft. So potentially, you could get this to run on just ambient air, and if you want even more power, say you want to, say you want to, uh, say say you want to like fly around in a spaceship, you're going to need a lot of extra power. So you may, if if you want that extra power, you can add the combustion system to the device to get that extra power.